there are four very critical skills. The first one is that in order for you to add value to someone as a leader, you have to be a relationship-focused person. And the truth is, if we look at all the good leaders through history, they built personal relationships with their people, and those personal relationships stood the test of time. Uh, I shared a story in the session that I was in that I work with a CEO. He doesn't, she, he doesn't like people. And it's very obvious when he wants people to do things, they don't want to do it because they have no reason to go the extra mile for this person. So the, the relationship will build trust. And then the next one is to have a really good attitude. The, there is a statistic that was published in 1998, and off the top of my head, I don't remember the source, but it said that the business change in the world is every six minutes somewhere in the world. And so if you can't maintain a good positive attitude, look forward and say, you know what? Yeah, today was really rotten. Tomorrow will be a better day. You know, Sandra didn't get this done today. That's okay, let's work with her tomorrow. Leverage relationship, work on attitude, and move that piece forward. The third thing is equipping. And I think sometimes leaders forget that their most important resource is the people who work for them. It's not money, it's not bricks and mortar, it's not technology, it's people. And people really do need to be given the opportunity to grow and learn and to have the skills. You know, I often think that in tough times when people are put out of work, and this is true in Canada, we lost a lot of manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing jobs were something you could do with grade 12. You didn't have to go to a trade school. You didn't have to do any, go to university. You could just go to work out of high school. And one of the reasons that impact is so hard is because organizations didn't look at those as value added resources in their organization. They trained them to operate a punch press, they trained them to string cable, but they never trained them for anything else in the organization. And so I think when you're leading an organization, you have an obligation to the person on the lowest rung of the ladder to say to them, what skills would you like to acquire so that as our business changes that you can come along with it. And the leaders who do that are very rare. And they promote the most loyal followers. There are people who would work with Lee Iacocca tomorrow, right? Because they worked with him on the pony car, right? And he went to the mat to get the Mustang out there, it's still one of the best sports cars today. And when you talk to people that worked with him, they would, they would quit what they're doing today and go, right? And I think when you give them the skills, it promotes that. And then the last one is leadership. So relationship, attitude, equipping, and leadership. And you have to start somewhere. And I think it's a really fundamental thing. I used the quote last night at uh, dinner, you can't make you great. And everybody at the table kind of sat there. And they said, that's really odd. <laughs> I said, well, you can't. If you look at all the great leaders in the world, whether they're male or female, they all had support of some kind. And so what you really need to do is to step outside yourself and say, I will put the people who work for me first. And it's okay for me to either be in the center of the team or to be beside it, but I should not be behind it or too far out in front. And so I think with those four things, it makes it much easier for people who would really like to become leaders, you know, to be able to 
take that step. And it, it means you have to look at yourself a little bit differently, I think.